so you talked about coaching. Let's talk about the Rooney Rule. Let's just let's just talk about the Rooney Rule and uh, thoughts. Yeah, Brian Flores' impression. I'm sorry, it's racist. We go ahead. <laughs> So the Rooney Rule is a National Football League policy that requires league teams to interview ethnic minority candidates for head coaching and senior football operations job. It is an example of affirmative action, even though there is no hiring quota or hiring preference given to minorities, only an interviewing quota. It was established in 2003, and variations of the rule are now in place in other industries. Okay. And here, here, here's let me tell you about cracker crumbs and how sometimes – uh, things get whited up, right? It is how do we help these niggers? All right. All right. First, first thing you want to do is not call them niggers, okay? Because when you call them niggers, they're not going to want your help. And not then, very receptive. Right. And then they're going to get loud and they're going to cause a scene. And then you're going to get upset. And then you're going to feel bad and go, oh my God, I didn't mean to do that. You know what? Here, you can have it. And then they're going to accept it, but then not even be validated and accepted because it goes, oh, well, you just gave this to me because you called me a nigga and I raised hell. And then everybody on the outside is going to say, you're only getting this because they called you a nigga and you raised hell. And I'm not anti-affirmative action. I'm not because I think you need... It was put in place for a reason. Yeah, exactly. It's put in place for a reason, but... When applying affirmative action, you have to do it in good faith. Uh, and it goes on both ends from the majority. Make sure that when you're bringing people in to hire them or you're hiring people to meet your fucking quota, that they are qualified or overqualified for the job. They are people who could get that job under normal circumstances. They just weren't given the they weren't given the best opportunity to get that job. Also, it just wasn't the right time or like, I mean. This is it, it just comes down to two when you're the owner of your own company and you do something like that, you need to be able to look at something and say, Hey, this is how I do things. This is how I want it to run. I got in this position to where there shouldn't be outside opinions helping me make this decision. The decision is mine. And at the end of the day, it's unfortunate, but that's how this world is. And we have to get we have to. It's not that we should ch shouldn't challenge how this world is, but at the end of the day, you've got to be respectful of that too. We need to respect the idea that these people, they're billionaires, like they're rich as fuck. These people get to make that decision at the end of the day. They get to decide who the fuck they want to hire, like who they want to put in certain positions of power. Yes, would it look great if we had more black people considering the NFL? It's got to at least be over 50% black, right? 73%. Yeah, so in the NBA, we see, obviously, there's more black coaches. A lot of them typically are former players, or if they're not former players, they certainly have the experience or something, it's like a fizz or something. Like they, These are people that have all this experience. Ty Luz, Mark Jackson was a coach, obviously. Uh, but it's the same thing with white people. Like People were mad about Steve Nash getting hired to the Nets. Why? They KD wanted him. Shit on Durant wanted him. That was, that's that was just who they wanted. And Steve Nash is a very accomplished player, so he knows what he's talking about too. Right, right. Derek Fisher got hired by the Knicks, so there is, is we celebrate Derek Fisher getting hired uh, by not being a coach. We celebrate Mark Jackson getting hired by not being a coach, but we're mad that Steve Nash got it. And, and that's the bullshit. When I say we have to be real on both sides, it's either the oppressor and the oppressed people. When you're on the when you're on the receiving end of affirmative action, for one. Be mindful that you may have got this because of affirmative action. Let me tell you. Be ahead, accepted. Ahead. Make sure, though, that you are good enough. And if you get turned down or if you're an affirmative action hire and then you're immediately let go because you, you're not fucking good, don't blame it on you being black. Blame it on you not being good enough. There is, It's a two-way street here. This is going to be a great clip to cut and put even out there for the people for IG because let me tell you something. We want to talk about the bigger issues. Let's talk about the biggest elephant in the room. Fuck the coaching. Fuck the GMs. What about the ownership? Michael Jordan, I think, out of the four major sports, might be the only majority black owner in sports. Yeah, and so, yeah Magic Johnson is a Dodgers. He, but he's part of ownership. Not even majority. Majority. Jordan's the only one. And Jordan's yep. a former player, and it's the NBA. But and why, can't we, why can't we get some black owners? Because now the interview process changes. They're in on the meetings, too. 
if it's 32 in the NFL, if it's 32 fucking white men in a room, and I'm not calling them racist, but like the thing is, is that, well, how does it change? Okay, well, we'll do the Rooney rule, whatever that is. What about what about getting the ownership? What about the money? There's plenty of black people that have the money to own a team if they desire to do that. Why don't we get a black owner in the NFL? I don't. There's never been a black owner in the NFL. Let's get a black owner. And no, I don't want Jay Z or Sean Combs to be the fucking owner. Kanye, I'm a big Kanye fan. I don't want Kanye to be the owner of an NFL team. I want they're not, they're not gonna run it properly to do it. But there still is plenty of black people with money. Everybody holds Condoleezza Rice in big regard. Obviously, she's not a billionaire. She can't afford a team. I think she got interviewed once for like, I don't know if it was coaching or like GM. Somebody interviewed Condoleezza Rice once for a job. I want to say she got interviewed. Like, I know she's involved in sports and like they wanted her to she like. The college football playoff committee, right? Right. Like, like she's held in high regard. And, hey. you know, black people look at her as her, him and Colin Powell. I mean, Chappelle made fun of it, but like these are black people that are looked at as traitors because they're on the Bush administration. But it doesn't mean yeah, because because you would turn down a because you would turn down a job on the Bush administration if you were qualified for it. Get the exactly, fuck out of here! Exactly, and then you really are good at what you do. I don't remember. I mean, I was young. You know, we were young. The Bush administration was like I feel like elementary and middle, and then of course Obama's high school college. And so, like, you know, everybody loves President Obama. I'm they don't like, even know. Hey, Nick's don't even know why they love Obama. These places too, but go ahead. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want to get into some of the Obama. I'm not gonna get into politics. Yeah, I'm, 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 again, I'm not anti. I'm not anti Obama, but yeah, a lot of y'all niggas like either. Obama. Y'all like y'all like Obama for a lot of the wrong reasons, but that's another I mean, reason. reason. Yeah, and it's okay for that to be your only reason. Just just admit it. Just admit it. You just so, want to be a nigga. I, right. I get it. I get and, it. To your ownership thing, man, th that's why, again, I proposed this crazy theory and this media shit because it'll never stick, is that you have to earn, you have to own, earn your ownership, right? You have to be able to maintain it because ownership has to be competitive uh, because, again, owning the team or in the NBA governing the team because, you know, they don't call them owners no more, um, it, it, it needs to be as competitive as winning games is. Because when it's not as competitive as winning games is, there's no incentive for you to change the way you think. Because guess what? You can put in all these great diversity rules, but if you don't have diverse decision makers, and if you don't have a reason to make the owners, the rich billionaires, most of them in their and, and, and on the back end of their life, making those people change the way they think or just change their actions to appeal to you or appease you, nothing's going to happen. If there's no threat of them losing their team because they're not a good owner, nothing's going to happen because football or sports ownership is much different than most business ownership, right? Yeah. To, to own a, most businesses, you have to be a competent individual in order to own and run that business because if it's a you huge corporate position, right? To yeah. get to that position, uh, Usually there's a board that can vote you out if you fucking suck, right? Or you just won't. Or if you start a business yourself, if you're not good, your business will flop. Exactly. Where pro sports, you would think Bill Belichick would own a football team, right? Because he is like the brightest football mind we've ever seen. But he's probably never going to own a team because for one, he's going to coach until he's too fucking old. He's old, he's old to, now. To, to be an owner, right? All the owners are kind of old. And yeah, but and by the, the time he retires, like he's not, he's gonna we, not want to take on these that. systems are so similar. I mean, you look at the government, right? We look at everybody talks about the president, fuck the president. What about Congress, right? Most of these people they have unlimited terms, they're typically old white men, typically. Um, majority crazy, crazy white women, like uh, what's her name? The similarities between the two in reality, and so, like, I understand how everybody can look at something and be like, you know, now there's only 32 NFL owners and the people get to decide who's your representative, whether for the house or the Senate. I mean, that's what supposed to be America's a democracy, right? But it's yeah, also gerrymandered democracy. It's also a fucking capitalistic society. So money means something too. And we know this, everybody knows that money means something. 
And so I just think that you got to take these things and stride. And of course there will be improvements. Like there will eventually be a black owner in the NFL. I believe eventually it's got to happen. There's no way because then it will continue to be looked at as, you know, these motherfuckers really might be racist and like, but they're not racist just because they're like, no, we just, I'm sorry, this white guy, we thought he was better to run it. It's not because he's a nigga. If he had the same resume as the white man and the white man had his resume, we would have picked him too. I guess it's kind of how they're going to look at it. Yeah, like, and also a good old boys club, like if I know you and you want to buy in, I mean, look at our former president, Donald Trump. He had enough money to buy in at one point in time. They didn't want him. So he didn't buy in. Yeah, because, because they didn't think that he was fit to do it. So again, we're not here defending the the perceived racist owners or the alleged racist owners, racist owners. Uh, you just got to provide context to this stuff. And a lot of the world we live in is, is relationship built and identity built. So like if I can identify with somebody, I tend to want to be around those people. I, I tend to be more open to those people. And I tend to view their less than favorable characteristics properly because I can properly contextualize them. Uh, uh, like you and I can sit around and we can talk, curse, use the use the N word and use the B word, and I don't think you're a dumb, ignorant nigga, be because that's how you're speaking in this point in time. I know that you're a high functioning human being who's running a successful business right now, and you make real adult decisions, and you speak uh you speak like uh you should in the business place when you're in the business place. For sure, and that's why you know judging per a person off of anything if you don't know them you can't judge them like yes you can get a feeling or a anything like you can you can gauge a situation however you want and most people they go off their hunch right they should nine times out of ten you could be you're probably right because that's that's however you were raised or however whatever happened that's how you gauge situations but at the same time we also can be wrong and people forget we're all human. So like people, we all do wrong. Like, and we just have to understand that. And I, I just think that in a situation like this, the Rooney rule is great in general because people that are black, they should be, there's, it should be enough of them in it to where you are interviewing them for these positions, whether it be GM head coach or not. But like I said, if we break it down into a bigger thing, Let's talk about the ownership. I mean, that is where this really, if we want to start breaking it down, everybody's mad about a coach or a GM. Well, what about, and Grant, teams don't go up for sale very often. We saw the last team I can truly remember, obviously, getting sold was Kadon Sterling. Panthers, <laughs> Panthers. Yeah, and Tepper is the richest owner in the NFL. And then Cronk is second. So, like, he's the richest <laughs> dude. And so, like, he fucking licensed the NFL's shit. He owns Fanatics. Like, everybody buys, if you buy a sports stuff for the most part, you're probably getting it from him. And so, he's rich enough to where it's just like, well, he's the highest bidder. I mean, but same thing with the Clippers. In reality, the Clippers aren't worth $2 billion. But guess what? He paid cash. I don't even think he was the highest bidder. He paid cash. He, it, he paid cash, and then if you just look at him, um, what's his name? Um, um got Microsoft Bomber, Bomber, Steve Ball, yeah. Steve Ballmer. Steve Ballmer also is enthusiastic as fuck. He's he, a good he, owner too, though. He, but he's enthusiastic. He's at the games. He's dapping up everybody. Bro, do you know he, he did during COVID? He's a high energy guy. He's perfect owner. You know, he's during good. during COVID, he bought. His entire he bought the entire team home gyms once they got locked in and realized like you know everybody don't have like a gym in their house because everybody there didn't have like a big ass house you know what I mean he bought the whole team home gyms so that they could work out and stay in shape uh keep lifting all that stuff during COVID like Steve Ballmer isn't just here to make the money he is exactly the type regardless of race he's exactly who you want owning a team though. Like, so hear me out. You know, I, I don't, the Hawks are owned by a group or they were now. No, yeah. That's still a group. Cause Grant Hill is part of the ownership group, but, I, but there's actually a face on it now. Like the Braves are owned by a group. We don't even know. I don't know who the CEO, 
that it's owned by a group. That's a group statement whenever you talk about the Braves. And, you know, everybody's like, you know, Braves got all this talent. They draft well. They always accumulate picks and stuff. And you look at it and you're just like, well, God damn it. I mean, can we spend some money? But it's owned by a group. And so, like, and, you don't even know who to address. And groups don't make decisions very well. And one thing I think um, – Because Steve, multiple opinions. Like, Steve Ballmer is your I, – I think owners should be – the super rich competitive billionaires like Steve Ballmer, who he doesn't, I'm not saying he doesn't care about the team turning a profit, but if you look at the money he spends on his coaching staff, uh, the luxury cap, uh, tax money that he's spending, it's more than just the money for him. He's competitive and he wants to win. He wants, he really wants to take LA from the Lakers, which he'll never do, but he wants to do it and he's trying to do it. And, or you want to have some hundred millionaires who are trying to get to that billion who are so hungry that they're going to claw to get there. But you get these fucking, these, and this is going to sound crazy, but like these average billionaires, you know, the ones who like, yeah, they got their billions, but they don't, they're not like Balmer rich. They're not fucking, uh, uh, my man's in fucking Carolina rich because he's, he's trying to fucking win. Tepper's trying to win. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and like, Especially these 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 legacy owners, man. Like they care more about the showpiece than they do about winning the game. But